Hello and welcome back, and that's right, you know it's been almost a year since we first learned about the Ugreen NASYNC series, that's been almost nine months since their Kickstarter, and it's been like four months since it's been on actual retail, and in that time the brand's changed things, it's improved things, it's backpedaled some things, So, and with all that in mind, with Black Friday around the corner and everyone looking at the old Wonga, today I wanted to talk about the status quo with Ugreen, everything that's changed in that time time and ultimately by the end of this video help you decide whether your next NAS should be a Ugreen system. So to get the newbies up to speed real quick, Ugreen, the people that make the cables, the plug adapters, the battery packs, the docking stations, they actually had a range of NAS devices for a few years only available in the east and it's only this year that they launched the DXP NAS Sync series in a 2 bay, a 4 bay, another 4 bay, a 6 bay, an 8 bay and a little 4 bay flash model. So let's focus on the good this side, let's focus on all the great improvements that have happened this year before we decide to get negative. So starting positively, number one, the software definitely feels better. They've improved a lot of the text uh, portrayal there. It definitely looks a lot sharper as well. Uh, the responsive time for different applications and services, SMB multi-channel is improved upon, I would say. Uh, definitely navigating between different windows and tweaking and changing some of the order of things in the control panel all feel really good. The same with the re, uh, resource monitor, definitely feels a, a little bit more snappy and ultimately actually telling me more about what's going on with the system when it's in operation. They've definitely doubled down on that and improved upon it. There's no denying that they've definitely gone with the same design philosophy as we've seen from Synology DSM, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Also on top of that, even a year on, I've got to say that the Ugreen NAS devices are still pretty good in terms of hardware. Even though this hardware was first announced even prior to the crowdfunding as early as January 2024, right now in November 2024, this is still incredible hardware for the price point. You're talking 10 core i5s, you're talking dual 10 GBE, you're talking Gen 4 SSD base based in the base, you're talking about a Thunderbolt and USB type 4 system, you're talking about upgradable systems, SD card three slots there, it is still a very competitively priced system and versus the hardware you are getting. And right now, there aren't that many systems being released at the tail end of 2024 that can compete at the hardware at this scale and price point. The UGUS software now has a very detailed and user-friendly container manager. It has... I would argue, although slightly bare bone, but very, very functional virtual machine manager. They could have gone and just, you know, knocked on with VirtualBox in there, but they didn't. They went ahead and developed their own one from the ground up. It has a new download station application, a new music application there. The AI powered photo recognition application is still very, very good indeed. And it's actually broadened and has improved upon a lot of the AI engine and the options that are built into it there. Alongside that, file management and multiple file managing windows at once are all a great deal more improved upon. It does feel like they have continued putting stuff on there. And although this is kind of old news, I think those that are coming in and reading stuff online that may perhaps be outdated, it's worth highlighting that Ugreen does allow you to use third-party operating systems on their hardware without it invalidating your hardware warranty there. So you get three years hardware warranty with all of them, and you can install TrueNAS, you can install OMV, you can install Unraid, go ahead, install those, but again, you've got their own SSD inside that's got their operating system. You can just choose to boot from another. It's nice to have that flexibility. And I can definitely name a couple of NAS brands who will not go ahead with that kind of support. Ultimately, I'd say the majority of things that they promised on their crowdfunding they have delivered upon with this solution. They've managed to provide the hardware that they said, they've managed to provide a solution that does the things they said they're gonna do, and they've already started implementing some of the stuff that was on their roadmap, crucially not all of it. On top of that, it is available at traditional retail. And yes, the pricing they've committed to is the same as their RRP. So again, for those that did back, they did get a discount, and they didn't lie about the pricing, something you see depressingly a lot during uh, crowdfunding campaigns. Now. Are they a perfect solution? Unfortunately not. They're still a very, you know, forgive me, a green brand right now in the world of network attached storage. So for all of my positivity, now we've got to roll around in the mud some. Annoyingly, most of my critiques are critiques that still existed six months ago when I first talked about this product. And I know some of them, I would argue, are bigger proposals to tackle than others. Not all of them are. For example, the security manager that the system arrives with in the app center that allows you to scan your system periodically for viruses, for malware, and isolate them and quarantine them. That's all fair and well, but I want a security management tool that manages 
My System Security. If you go into the settings, the security manager settings are in there to allow for auto block to suspend um, the system for a certain given time to a certain IP after a given number of attempts. All they have to do is roll in password rules, roll in security, roll in SSH on off, roll in all of those things where the security manager could scan the system periodically and tell a system admin that it may or may not be in a safe state. It's useful to know that my system doesn't have viruses or malware, but network attached storage devices are far, far more under threat from ransomware. Ransomware that is caused by weaknesses in security. And I think the security manager still needs vast improvement. And continuing with security improvement, there's still no OTP, no MFA, no two-factor authentication. There's still no way for a local access into this system to be barred with two-factor authentication. Now, when you do use the remote Ugreen services to access the device over the internet, there are multi-layered security protocols there in place but on a local area network if i'm in local proximity with this device if i've got the username and i've got the password i can get in they need to establish two-factor authentication on these systems and something that may seem a little businessy that is still absent on this there is no support of iSCSI target and LUNs I want to be able to create nice raw pure storage on these devices I know there's going to be some of you that are saying that is a SAN property that's not really NAS's first priority and you're right to a point but the majority of other NAS brands have integrated iSCSI LUN slash target support on their systems and for those of you that are using systems that don't play nice with mapped network drives and you need to buy Find a network attached storage device as a kind of faux logical drive. iSCSI targets and learns are still very, very popular to be able to do that. And I'm surprised it's taken them this long to integrate that. Then there's the backup and synchronization tools. They have definitely, definitely, definitely improved on what I saw six months ago in UGOS. But nevertheless, the only cloud platform I could see supported currently was OneDrive. When, let's be realistic, Google Drive should really have been the focus there as being one of the most popular that they should be dealing with as a remote cloud sync client. Now, when it comes to NAS to NAS backups, whether it is um, a Ugreen NAS to a Ugreen NAS or a Ugreen NAS to a Synology, a QNAP or whatever, those facilities are there but there's still little bits and bobs that they could stand to improve upon and particularly some of the filters and the rules that were within those backup appliances that are still absent there and finally weirdly after all this time you can still only really get hold of you green nas devices in the us and germany and i'm hearing rumblings of availability in the uk its global reach and availability is comparatively small versus any other brand and there's a good possibility that you're watching this video thinking do you know what i'm thinking i'm going to get hold of one of those and you simply can't they're not available in your region which i understood during the crowdfunding they may have limited the availability but given the enormous range of different you green appliances accessories and peripherals that are available globally from this enormous brand it seems super weird to me that these systems are so limited in their global availability but there you go now you're up to speed that's pretty much the story of you green nas in 2024 the dxp series or the nas sync series is now available all over the place it's a successful crowdfunding story i just really want to see where they take this software even further because although they may have nailed down the fundamentals i think there's still a way to go now if you're interested in getting hold of one of these devices during black friday I understand that three of the different devices are going to be on sale. I'll put the links in the description below, but the DXP4800 Plus, which is the Pentium model I've got here, is going to be $139 off. And the uh, DXP2800, that's the little two bay uh, with the M100 CPU there, that's going to be $79 off. And the DXP4800, the non uh, plus version is going to be $119 off. So that's all three of those. Now, obviously, those are based in the US there. I don't know if there's going to be sales in other regions, and I'll link to it in the description below. But if you found it helpful and you're interested in one of these, that's the best deal I've seen so far on those. But still keep in mind that these are NAS devices, that although the hardware is mwah, absolutely A1 as far as I'm concerned, the software still has a wee way to go. Again, Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you've got questions about the Ugreen NAS Sync series that you want to know more about these, even if you're watching this video in the future, use the comments below. I 
pretty much test every NAS brand regularly every single month. So anything new that's been added, I should hopefully know, and I'll let you know in the comments. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching, and have yourselves a fantastic week.